This is a 2005 Maserati Quattro Porte, and it is a truly terrible car. Performance is mediocre. Its design isn't aging well. It's unreliable, and it's so full of questionable details that it makes you wonder if any of the people who designed this car had any previous experience with wheeled transportation. And yet, it's 20 grand. That's right, it's 20 grand. Well, not quite. The average asking price for a Quattro Porte from this era on Auto Trader is actually 23,400, which is a little more than 20 grand, but there are many of these listed for sale for 20 grand or less. Either way, it's a far cry from this car's original asking price, which was $106,000 before options. And that makes this the easiest way to look rich for cheap. You see, if you drive around in a 2005 Quattro Porte, no one will know that you spent the same as a new Dodge Dart with hubcaps. Everybody will think that you spent $106,000, but you will know because you will become intimately acquainted with all of the problems that I described. Today, I'm going to give you a tour of all those problems and show and tell you about all of them. And then I'm going to take this thing out on the road to find out if at least it drives like a Maserati should and then I'm gonna give it a Doug score. And by the way, I borrowed this Quattro Porte here in beautiful Minneapolis using Toro, which is this service that lets you rent other people's interesting cars instead of normal, boring airport rental cars. Click the link in the description below to sign up for Toro. Also in the description below, you can find a link to autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've compiled more of my thoughts about the Quattro Porte and a list of cars that currently for sale on Auto Trader that will make you look rich for a lot less than they cost new. Anyway, on to the ins and outs of a used Quattro Porte. I'll start with something that no other car should ever replicate. Car designers, listen up. When you put it in reverse in this car, it beeps at you constantly. It never stops just to let you know that you're in reverse. It doesn't beep on the outside like one of those trucks that goes beep, beep. It just beeps at you. Thank you. Yes, I'm in reverse. I know that. Another annoyance related transmission, you're driving along in automatic mode in this car and you pull the paddles because you want to start manually shifting. Well, that does nothing. Pulling the paddles has no effect. Instead, to activate the paddles, you actually have to press a little button on the center control stack that says M slash A shift. And only then can you shift with the paddles. I've never seen that in any other car, thankfully. But I'm not done with the steering wheel just yet. In fact, I'm not even close. Now, the steering wheel has eight buttons on it, and like in every other car, they do various things. They deal with your phone, they change the stereo volume, but the strange thing about the steering wheel is that on the back, it has more buttons. That's not that uncommon. A lot of car companies put buttons in the back to control the radio, whatever, but in this car, the strange thing is, the button on the right side and the button on the left side both do the same thing. They both change the radio preset. You can adjust it up or down on the right side and up or down on the left side. Why put two buttons on opposite sides of the steering wheel that do exactly the same thing? Did they just have extra buttons and they weren't sure what to do with them? But I'm still not done with the steering wheel yet. Now, one of the buttons on the steering wheel says info. I have pressed this button at every menu, at every setting. It does nothing. However, this car on its steering wheel with all those buttons, none of them control the cruise control. In fact, the cruise control is placed very awkwardly where you'd least expect it, behind the shift paddle, behind the wiper stock, behind the ignition switch, on the dashboard under the gauge cluster. It makes no sense. So they put an info button on the steering wheel that doesn't do anything, but they couldn't put the cruise control buttons there. <laughs> Who came up with that? And yes, that means every time you want to adjust the cruise control, you can't just do it on the steering wheel like every other car. You have to reach all the way around under the gauge cluster to some buttons you can't see, which is infuriating. But it becomes even more infuriating when you start to look around at some of the other buttons on this car. For example, the rear sunshade, which you will never use, has two buttons, one to raise it, one to lower it. Most other cars just have one button. And if you count the buttons in back, where the rear sunshade also has buttons to raise and lower it, there are four buttons to control the rear sunshade. They could stick those in this car, but they couldn't figure out how to get the cruise control within sight of the driver. But back to the steering wheel. Oh, there is so much to cover with the steering wheel. Now, I love in this car that the shift paddles stay mounted when you turn the steering wheel. They don't move with the wheel, and that way you always know where the paddles are at any time. What I don't love is the fact that they designed the turn signal and wiper stocks to be behind the shift paddles and not to stick out past them. So when you go to put on your turn signals every single time, 
mean that you bump your finger on the paddle because you have to kind of reach around the paddle to put on the turn signal. Next, we move along to the Quattroporte Pièce de Résistance, the, the most ridiculous, bizarrely engineered thing in this entire car, and that would be the center controls. We will start with my favorite button, the center controls, the one that says TV. You push it and a little icon comes up that says TV not available. I'm gonna clue you in here. TV was never available. The TV wasn't offered in the US market, and yet Maserati kept the TV button and just popped that little thing up to tell you about something you couldn't have. Next, we get to the radio presets, and with those, you have to wonder if Maserati was just trying to make people laugh. They certainly have made me. Now, when you look at the center control stack, there are no radio preset buttons. Instead, the radio presets are only accessible if you go into the infotainment system. But here's the problem. You're driving around with the navigation system telling you where to go. You want to change the radio station? Ha <laughs> ha ha. Press radio. That gets you over to the radio thing. And then you have to adjust the, the control over to the preset area. Then you scroll between the presets and choose the one you want. Then to get back to the navigation screen, you press navigation. So if you want to change the radio while you're driving along with the navigation system on, you have to press one, two, three, and then adjust, and then press navigation again just to change the radio station. And let's hope you want that station because otherwise you gotta go through the same process again. I can't imagine who came up with that. Seriously, I want their names. Is that the most ridiculous thing in the infotainment system? Of course not! How about this? If you're on a screen that has two different columns of stuff that you can scroll through, on the left column, you turn the little scroll wheel to the left in order to go down. On the right column, you turn the very same little scroll wheel to the right to go down, ensuring that you must take your eyes off the road to figure out exactly which column you're looking at. That is brilliant Italian design. Since I'm in the middle here, let's talk about the cup holder. There's only one. Lovely. And it's about the shallowest cup holder I've ever seen. The cup just flops around. It comes up to about here on a bottle of water. That obviously is a problem when you're in a turn. It can just fly out. And since I'm questioning the quality of some of the things that Maserati chose to install in this car, how about the fact that the entire climate control vents and clock in the middle of the dashboard just shake when you touch them? Now, I admit that that could be unique to this car, but I bet it isn't. Another thing that shakes in the middle here is this really strange little tiny transmission lever that they put in cars for a few years in the 2000s. It's really stupid and it just kind of shakes randomly unless you want to put it in gear. Another fun feature of the Quattro Porte, when you turn it on, the check engine light is the very last light in the gauge cluster to go away. Sometimes it doesn't go away for up to 30 seconds, giving you a nice little pang of anxiety every time you start your Quattro Porte. All right, now I'm outside the car, but that doesn't mean I'm done pointing out its flaws. Let me tell you a general flaw this car had. The interior is blue. In fact, the interior in virtually all of these really early Quattroportes is blue. That means blue seats, blue door panels, blue dashboard. I hope you really like blue. Also, this car doesn't have a sunroof for 106 grand, and it doesn't have heated seats. If I'm paying that kind of money, those are things that I want, especially if I'm driving a cool Maserati. Admittedly, it does have three little vents on the side that look sort of like those ones that you can buy at AutoZone to make your car look cooler. So it has that going for it. Other problems I have with this car include the passenger side airbag cover. In most cars, there's just a nice, beautiful dashboard. In this car, there's a nice dashboard and then this giant airbag cover thing that leaves no question as to where the airbag is gonna pop out from, assuming that it works. Another unusual thing about this car is that the door handles have two distinct ways that you can open the door once you look at them closely. One does it electronically. You pull it and the door pops right open. The other does it mechanically. Presumably that's because Maserati knew the electronic one would break. And then there are the car's reliability problems. As you can imagine, this thing being an expensive Italian car is pretty expensive to maintain, but the real problems come with the transmission's reliability. This cool Duo Select transmission has a clutch that needs to be replaced frequently. Some people on the Maserati Life forums say every 15,000 miles, which is a year of driving for a lot of people. And what does that clutch replacement cost? $4,000 at a dealer. There's also a well-known problem with a pump inside the transmission. There are more reliable parts available now, but replacing the original pump costs over $3,000. Maserati life. 
Now I admit I've been very mean to this car and there are a couple of cool things about it. For example, in back the rear seats recline with the push of a button, which is something you don't often see in sports sedans. Also the brake pedal has the Maserati logo on it. So it has terrible ergonomics and a horrible infotainment system, a bunch of the interior jiggles, there's no sunroof, there's no heated seats, it has these ugly little vents on the side, the car looks generally outdated, the interior is blue, but every time you push the brake, Maserati logo. Yeah, <laughs> not so bad now. So that's what you'd have to put up with if you bought a Quattroporte for 20 grand to make yourself look rich. It ain't pretty. Now it's time to get this thing out on the road and find out if at least the driving experience lives up to the Maserati name. Driving the Quattroporte, ah, lovely. It probably isn't that bad, right? The primary issue with this car, and it is a massive one, is the transmission. This is the worst transmission I've ever used in any automobile in history. Uh, I think it's the worst transmission ever conceptualized. I think you making a transmission in your basement would probably come up with a better way to put power from the engine to the wheels than this one. And maybe a more reliable one too. And there are many issues with the transmission, but the biggest issue with the transmission is how lurchy it is between gears. So when you're driving along, as I am now, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna accelerate here. All right, upshift. <laughs> you, it's almost like you're driving with a learner driver who's trying to learn how to drive stick shift and they're, they're kind of jerky and they're slow to put it in gear and the revs fall when they, when they put the clutch in before they get it in the next gear. It is almost aggressively bad. Just, just truly terrible, clunky, awful, slow, not smooth. Every bad adjective you can think of, uh, I would apply uh, to this transmission. In fact, when I come to a stoplight, I'm just dreading what will happen next because I know that I will then have to accelerate through all the gears. In fairness to Maserati, I think a lot of the reason that we think this transmission is so bad, and everybody thinks this transmission is bad, is because we, it's been 12 years since this car was produced. We know what has come out since then, and we know how much better it has gotten. This transmission wasn't great at the time, and it was kind of considered to be bad, but with the advent of dual clutch, today's world, you look at it and you're like, I can't believe how bad this is, but 12 years ago, it wasn't that horrible. Now, the transmission is really the main thing you notice when you're driving this car. It is just that bad. It is. It, to me, it almost makes the car undrivable. Also, in fairness to Maserati, they realized early on how bad the transmission was. And in later Quattroportes, they added a ZF's traditional automatic transmission, which eliminates a lot of the problems that I mentioned before. The stupid little gear lever, the replacement of the F1 pump and the clutch, the lurchiness that I'm talking about right now. With that transmission, this car becomes sort of a quirky little ergonomic disaster, but a cheap one. and at one with a decent transmission, and then it becomes a more appealing prospect. If you're actually looking for one of these, I strongly suggest getting a true automatic Quattroporte instead of one of these with Duo Select, which, which is just a fancy way of saying very horrible. Now, in the stock form, the Quattroporte is not a particularly enticing sound, which is interesting because we know Maserati now with the Gran Turismo as being a very loud, exciting car to drive. And that's not true really of, of this one. However, there were exhaust, aftermarket exhaust for the car, this car that could really open it up. Uh, and they were quite impressive. The one major selling point I'll give this car is that the handling is excellent. Truly, I mean that. It's really, really excellent. Even 12 years later, even with all these problems, even though it's kind of a stupid car, uh, it, it's very sharp. It drives very sharp. It corners sharply. The steering is very connected and precise. At the time this car came out, BMW was obsessed with just forcing big power into the M5. Maserati went with less power. This car only has 400. The M5 had 500. Uh, but instead they wanted to make the car sort of more lithe, more tossable, and they succeeded in that. It does a really, really good job uh, going around corners. It's fun to drive, but then you do the transmission shifts. Oh, the brakes are strong too. I mean, this was a performance car. In every sense, this was a good performance car, uh, except it didn't sound that great, and the transmission just <laughs> ruined the experience. It didn't dull the experience. It didn't make the experience less in interesting, less exciting. It ruined the experience of driving a Maserati Quattroporte. And, and it it's, doesn't matter what you do to make it better. A lot of the owners, Maserati Quattroporte owners who watch this video said, well, take your foot off the gas when you're, ex when you're shifting and it'll do better. It does make it a little smoother. It's also annoying. Why do I have to do that? Isn't the whole point, you know, I don't want to drive a stick shift. I don't want to be moving my feet in my 
my hands. Well, I'm pulling the pedal and taking my foot up. Well, why don't I just have a stick shift? It would be better. And when I put in auto mode, that's when it's really bad. Auto mode shifts very slowly. I would rather drive uh, a stick shift car with my wife who doesn't know how to drive a stick shift than drive this car in auto mode. Yep, gotta go in reverse and have it beep at me. Beep, beep, yeah, 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 I know I'm in reverse. I'm going backwards and it says R and the, the thing, I, I don't wanna be too bad to this car. The seats are reasonably comfortable, his visibility's good. I mean, it was a good car than that and it was trying to bring this cool new Formula One style technology to the road. It's just that with hindsight, we now know that that was a horrible idea and you know, I, I'd rather eat a ream of paper. And so that's the 2005 Maserati Quattroporte, a true disappointment in every way. One of the single worst transmissions ever installed in a modern car. Strange quirks, terrible ergonomics, and tremendously high repair bills and potential risks. If you see one of these on the street, make sure to stare at it, maybe take a picture. You'll make the owner's day. And he needs that because he just spent eight grand to replace his F1 pump in his clutch, his check engine light is on, and he can't figure out how to change his radio presets. And now it's time for the Doug score and some angry emails from Quattroporte owners. I'll start with the weekend category. Styling is fine, not great, not bad, but just fine. However, it's really started to show its age. To me, this no longer looks like the expensive car it once did, and it's a four out of 10. Acceleration, that horrid transmission dulls this car's V8 performance so much it only does zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds, giving it just a five out of 10. Handling is excellent, especially for its age. It easily scores a six out of 10, just one point behind the new Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. Cool factor, I have to admit, I don't find this car cool, and if you've watched this video, you probably don't find it cool either, but I took this car through a Wendy's drive-through when I was in Minneapolis, and the workers flipped out. You got a Maserati! The entire restaurant came over to look at it. It's no Ferrari, it's no 918 Spider, but regardless of what you and I might think, it's cooler than average, and it gets a six out of 10. Finally, importance measures the car's significance. This car is more significant than a run-of-the-mill Honda Accord or Ford Explorer, but in my opinion, not by much. It gets a five out of 10, bringing its total weekend score to 26 out of 50, above only my old Range Rover and the horrible Cadillac ELR. How much do I want to drive this car on the weekend? Less than the Mercedes R63 AMG, which is a minivan. Maybe it'll fare better in the daily categories. <laughs> Starting with features, the infotainment system is horribly designed. There's no heated seats or sunroof. It isn't off to a good start, and it gets a four out of 10. Luxury measures comfort and smoothness. This car is sort of smooth, I guess, but that transmission just kills any semblance of serenity inside the cabin. It gets only a five out of 10. Quality measures reliability and materials. Reliability is notoriously awful, and materials aren't really much better. It gets a measly three out of 10, the lowest score yet in this category. For practicality, it has 15.9 cubic feet of cargo space, giving it a four out of 10. And finally, value. Any other car would get a one for being so poorly built, so poorly designed, so poorly executed. But folks, it's still a Maserati for 20 grand. Argue with me all you want, but ask someone who isn't into cars if they want a Maserati for $20,000 and they'll ask where to sign. It gets a four out of 10, bringing its total daily score to 20 out of 50, worse than every other car I've ever scored except for the Ferrari F40. That seems about right. In the end, the total Doug score is 46, making it the second worst car I've scored. Yes, Maserati Quattroporte owners, thank God for the Cadillac ELR.